So okay. Like, so pizza breaks over. Yeah, pizza breaks over. Hope you all had your fill. We all have a, a nice drink. We can be sipping while uh, going through this lecture. I don't want to leave you boys. We had a little pizza on, party. Uh, unhydrated and unentertained. You guys ate the pizza already? We had a pizza Sheesh, party. Sheesh, bro. Sheesh. Sheesh, bro. So, last time I left off, I told you about Danganronpa 3. Uh. <laughs> Despair. Despair arc. We talked about the Despair arc. We talked about the, the, the three new characters, the ultimate animator, the ultimate boxer, and the ultimate teacher. Those are the three characters we gotta keep track of. Because, oh, oh so, uh, uh, some facts I forgot about during the lecture is Nagito calls in a bomb threat because there's this big test that's gonna happen and no one's prepared for it because someone died in, in school. Right? So they so he calls in a bomb threat to stop the test from happening. A really weird thing. Got three people expelled, including himself. Oh, I think I remember this. I remember this. Uh, another thing happened. Uh, uh, when Junko died, the remnants of despair were so fucked up that they, that they put parts of Junko onto themselves. You can see this with uh, Nagito and Ultra Despair Girls. He cut off his own left hand, put on Junko's left hand. Uh, another character, his, he, he has only one eye. He we removed it. Now. Yeah, he removed it and put Junko's eye right in the smack of it. Yes, Mr. Smith. Did the nurse put... Don't put the camera in. <laughs> Did the nurse put the... The wound, the yes. Oh. Yes. You... Uh, that... Well, they're all, she's the ultimate nurse, so she's able to do crazy procedures like that. Well, yes. So? so they're putting, like, body parts of Junko? Yeah, each, each person and has a body they, part of Junko. Do they do anything? No. It's just for show. It's, it's like, I'm a part of Junko. It's like a, a symbolic way. Junko's still oh, alive in all of us. I thought that's why the fucking nurse was, like, that shit crazy. <laughs> she, horny? Dude, she was horny from the beginning. Yeah, Every she scene was. with uh, the nurse girl... Uh, I think her name is like freaking uh, Ma, Mi- Ma, Ma, Mikan. Ma, yeah, Mikan. Dude, she's horrible. Like she's like always in it. Falling over. Anyways, uh, so we're gonna talk about future arc, and future arc is a really interesting uh, thing because like, let's all be real here. Let's all be real. The spare arc. We already know this shit. If you pay attention to Dingo Bit One and Two, you already know what happens in the despair arc. So it's just kind of like, you're just buying your time, waiting for the bite of 87 to happen. Uh, there's some cool stuff like Nagito bomb threats and like, you know, weird fan service scenes. You know, that shit's in here. But when the real shit gets crazy is three future arc. Yes, Mr. Toe. Okay. Buff, just like, oh, I know those characters. That's so cute. And, like, you know, horny box. Like, uh, Danganronpa has a big thing with, like, sexual stuff. It's a very fan service thing. There's a lot of horny people working on this game. It's pretty, it's pretty unbelievable. To be honest. Sometimes it's too much. Sometimes, man, it's just right. Unless you're me. So, future arc begins with Makoto on trial. Makoto is on trial for letting the remnants of despair live. Kidnapping them and trying to rehabilitate them. They're all supposed to be executed. They're dangerous motherfuckers who like almost ruined the world. So everyone wants Makoto to be put on trial and most likely get put to death. There's some people in his corner like uh, I, Ayo or whatever. Ina. Ina. You got freaking Kyoko, uh, the clairvoyancy guy is also a board member for some reason. That makes no sense. Byakuya, like all the original crew is behind Makoto, but all of the top executives, they like, nah, we don't fuck with this, right? And mostly you, you, you from Persona 4 is here, <laughs> and, he, and he's the president of the Future Foundation, right? And uh, there, there's a lot of shit up with you. Like, he, he's really connected to the ultimate housewife and the ultimate boxers. They're like, uh, they're like a fucking Naruto trio. You know, they're, they're Naruto, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. You know, they, they were all together. But, yeah, shit got, shit got kind of weird. Shit got kind of crazy. Let me look at my nose. I, I actually want to, I don't want to call him you. <laughs> I 
I don't want to call him you. I don't know what his actual name is. Yeah, his his actual name is is it's like something like it's fucking Ryo, Rio, something like that. No, no, I'm Kyosuke. Kyosuke, that's his name. Kyosuke. Yeah. Yes, Mister. What happens to the teacher? The teacher? Yeah. Oh, the the homeroom teacher? Yeah. Yeah, I was about to mention that. Oh boy. In Despair Arc, she actually becomes despaired. She gets blacked, alright? She gets fucked up. Because uh, she got with the needles and shit. She watched the fucking evil home video and she's hypnotized. For years. No one knows she's actually evil and with Junko. So for years, she's just kind of like, you know, sabotaging shit. And that's like Kyosuke's girlfriend. That's the future foundation's waifu. So he doesn't suspect her at all. But she's actually a remnant of despair. And that has really big implications later down the line. And you know about, you know, uh, Juzo. He, <laughs> he also simped for, for Junko. Also kept his mouth shut about what happened. Because no, he, he didn't want anyone to know he was gay. So what happens is Makoto is brought into this board <laughs> meeting. About what to fucking do with him. You know, what do we do with Makoto? He broke our rules. He saved these fucking kids. They're evil. We gotta fucking do something with Makoto. He's the ultimate hope, but he's dangerous. And what happens is, for some reason, someone, like, throws a grenade of, like, sleepy gas. Everyone falls asleep, and there's, brah, another killing game. Brah, brah, brah. But this one isn't like the other killing games. This one has a special gimmick, which is really cool. Everyone has a wristband, right? And it says one forbidden rule, right? And the forbidden rules are actually kind of cool. Like, one, you can't have someone step on your shadow or you die. If you witness violence, you die. Or if you throw a punch, you die. Like each one of them has their own special forbidden rule that they can't break, right? And, like, every... I would say, like, every... Every so often, every, every like, uh, I think it was two hours, every two hours, everyone goes to sleep again, right? Because of the wrist, the, the wristwatch, like, in, inject the sleepiness into them, and someone will die. Like, the killer wakes up because his sleepy thing doesn't work, and he can get up and kill someone and then go back to sleep. So, there's a killer among them, but they don't know who it is. So, it's like a whole new, like, killing game. And the crazy shit. Crazy shit happens. There's so many anime fights. It's crazy. There's a girl in a wheelchair, right? And she's like really scared and nervous. She's like, oh, I don't know how to speak. And she speaks through uh, a robot, which is Monami. She's the person who made like the net code for uh, the Neo project, right? She's uh, like the creator of it. Yes. <coughs> so did Junko ha hack into the school's Wi Fi? Yes, essentially, yeah. She ruined Evo. She ruined Evo for everybody. Yeah. So, uh, what happened is... That girl isn't actually real. That girl is a robot controlled by, uh, Monica from Ultra Despair Girls. Right? Monica escapes from, uh, Makoto's little sister and, and Toka. Towa. Toka. 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 Escapes from Toko, and she just like lives in like this RV and just like hacks and just talking to Makoto and like every everyone in the cast just like yep I'm a cool robot girl, but she's actually Monica in disguise And then when it gets revealed Monica's like you know what I quit. I'm gonna be neat I'm gonna eat potato chips for the rest of my life And I'm gonna fly into outer space. <laughs> Goodbye and she casts Zoom from Dragon Quest, and she just lives in space now. That's her canonical ending. She doesn't come back. Wait, the girl or the robot? Monica. The, the real girl controlling the robot. The one from the Spur Girls. She flies off. Why does she fly off? She just flies off. Her planet needs her. But that was she's like, planet. again, she's in like a, a, a van, and the van turns into a rocket ship, and she like zooms away to the, into space and just eats potato chips and watch anime. So, that robot is, like, really strong, or whatever, and starts fighting Kyosuke. Because Kyosuke thinks 
Makoto is causing the killing game. He released the remnants of despair. This nigga's evil. This guy's evil. We gotta kill him. We gotta kill Makoto. So he 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 has like a guaranteed hunch that Makoto is the killer. But Makoto's not. We all know Makoto's a good a good boy. He's a good boy, you know. But, you know, he, he trusts all his subordinates, but actually every single one of them betrayed him, right? Sakura uh, betrayed him. Housekeeper Girl betrayed him. Everyone betrayed him, except for, like, you know, Makoto, right? And the, there's the old headmaster, the old head. He's, like, fucking, he's, like, this fucking weird old dude. Looks like some kind of fancy master Roshi. Uh... He, he, he can't speak any lies because he has a wristband if he was speaking any lies. And he thought every one of them was despair. Each one of them were like, <coughs> was a remnant of despair. So he's the one who actually caused the killing game, right? But Kyosuke doesn't know that. He still thinks it's Makoto, right? And then it's revealed to him <coughs> that... Don't coof. <laughs> Don't coof. I choked. Don't coof in my... I that, choked. That, that's I choked. Demerit. What do you mean? I choked. Yeah, I demerit, choked. Boy. I choked. That's a demerit, boy. I did nothing wrong. Anyways. So, yeah. Essentially, he finds out that the ultimate housekeeper, his waifu, was actually evil this whole time. Was controlled by Junko. And she was the first one dead in the killing game, right? So no one could suspect her. Kyosuke goes up to her. Right? And he had to fight the, the headmaster. So he's all wounded and shit. He has like one arm. He fucking stabs her in the neck, dude. And he's like, I fucking hate you. I'm gonna kill despair. I'll kill anyone with despair. Hey, ain't nothing gonna stop me. Right? So he's with uh, Sakura, which is like uh, Jun Junzo's last name. I'll just call him Sakura. And uh, he goes up to him, and he's just like, boss, I got something to tell you. Because he's like his bodyguard. They're like best friends. Mm -hmm. And like, like, he already knows that Sakura probably betrayed him. And you know what he does? He, like, Sakura is about to fess up, and they're about to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Fucking uh, Kiyosuke fucking stabs him in the stomach. He's like, you betrayed me. I know what the fuck you are. I know you're, you're a remnant of despair, bitch. And he fucking stabs him in the fucking chest, dude. And he just leaves him for dead. And it's like, holy shit. And then his eyes fucking turn black, bro. And he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill any despair nigga. Anyone who has despair, I'm gonna fucking kill them. Right? So he's just going around murdering people. And becomes like the coolest character ever. So, and at the same time, like, Makoto's trying to run away from this guy. Like, this guy's a threat. Like, you can't kill you from Persona 4. <laughs> he's the main character. You can't just kill him. He's so strong. He's like S level rank. They like they all have threat levels in this show, but he he has like S S level threat level. Like he's scary, bro. So what ends up happening is like Makoto can't run. If he runs, he he dies because that's his forbidden, forbidden action. action. You know. So he's forced to just like power walk his way throughout this like this this whole show. While, like, this dude is trying to kill him, yes? If I may interject. Yes. You know, picks him up. Yeah, sometimes. But that that's only sometimes. Before, that's before she gets shot. Wait, what? The black one gets shot. Can we talk about this? Anyways. <laughs> what happens is, like, there's this big feud between, the, like, the Future Foundation and all this shit. Like, the killing game's happening. And then, finally, the ultimate animator's there. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? Us there. Right? And he realizes, like, the killing game is, like, fake. It's not real. What's actually happening is they're all being brainwashed by the monitors in the Future Foundation based on his technology. His anime brainwashing technology. This is all his fucking fault. And he's like, you know what? I'm sick of this despair shit. I'm sick of this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make everyone good by brainwashing them to make them good. You know? So he's like going around brainwashing every single person now to make them on his side. Right? It's called like the ultimate hope video. Right? And you kind of just lose your mind. It's just like you just follow his orders. And it's fucking crazy. And like everyone's losing because like after, okay, uh, <coughs> Makoto <laughs> and uh, Kiyosuke, they have a talk. Right? It's super intense. Like Kiyosuke's like beating the fuck out of Makoto. And he's just like, 
bruh, is this what she wants, bruh? And then finally, Kiyosuke fucking cries. He's like, okay, bro. I'll follow you, bro. Hope, hope gang. Like, <laughs> and he's like, wild crying. He's fucking sick as shit. And then all of a sudden, in his katana, there's a second katana. He gets fucking two katanas and like swats there. Swats brainwashed by the ultimate animator. So everyone's after him. He has two katanas fucking chopping people up left and right. But there's too many, dude. There's too many. Fucking Ayui trying to, you know, get freaking good old Makoto. Trying to like run him over, you know. Get him out of this building. Because Hope Peaks, it's actually underground. It's underwater. They made a copy of the building, and they're under fucking water, so they can't escape. Right? And this is, like, revealed halfway through the show. And then, fucking Alvi, squat members shoot her! She gets shot in the legs, and she can't run anymore. And it's like, bro, is she, is she like, oh, I'm okay, Makoto. You you try to stop right, till I'll just stay here. And she's like, oh, like she's fucking dying. And Kyoko. Your girl Kyoko. You know what her forbidden action was? Oh, right. Letting Makoto live past the third day. The third reset. And they're on the fourth reset. So she fucking dies! She fucking dies! Kyoko, one of the main characters, dies. Right? The ultimate detective who loved Makoto with all his heart fucking dies. Fucking rigged game. It's fucking crazy! Like, tons of shit happens. But then... The coolest moment happened. Uh, Byakua is not participating in the killing game. He's outside trying to find where the fuck these guys are. They're not in the original building. They're in a proxy building somewhere else. So he's trying to find out where that is. <clears throat> so, uh, but he's also helping the remnants of despair. Class 77 with uh, Hajime and like, Nagito. He's trying to save those people from being fucking... Uh, the, the being Buster Call. <laughs> Trying to save him from being Buster Call. And eventually, the coolest moment happened. Raito has like a system, you know, like the, the United States, like, you know, PSA system. Mm -hmm. He was going to play the, the, the Hope video for everyone to be hypnotized, to be like the same person. But then, when, when everyone's about to be killed by these SWAT members that were brainwashed. The people from the last game, Dan Ropa 2 cast shows up, unbrainwashed, 100% power, <laughs> fighting squad members. It's the dopest shit ever. Nagito, like, hits a... He's the ultimate lucky student, right? He hits a rock. It hits another rock. It sends, like, a fucking boulder down. Fucking kills 10 squad guys. It's fucking crazy, right? So the old cast comes back, right? And they... Well, I guess 2's cast comes back. And they save the day, and if you remember correctly, Raito, or Raida, is from class 77. The same class of the remnants of despair. Right? And he's about to hit, like, the, I'm gonna brainwash the whole world button. And they're like, listen, man. You're one of us. And it's just like, it's so hard, dude. Despair is such a dick. I can't be Chad like you guys. I'm just a normal dude. And he's just like, listen, man, we all know what dude's from. And then he's like, Pockers! So he doesn't brainwash people. And to save the Future Foundation, because the Future Foundation basically caused all this to happen. And without the Future Foundation, the, like, the normal people just can't, you like, know, well, who do we trust? We can't trust the government. Oh they got killing game. What the hell? So the Class 77 takes the fall they takes the fall and said yeah we caused this right and class 77 becomes social outcasts forever because people still view them as the remnants of despair even though they're good now right but they have each other and they now have the ultimate animator on their side so after all that good old they all go to this submarine and they all have a party you know uh, class 77 only. Uh, class 78 with, with uh, Nagito, Aoi, and uh, all those other people. They're, they're somewhere else, but... Nagito? Yeah, no, not Nagito. Mm. Well, th Nagito's partying. Yeah, you know Nagito's partying. <laughs> and they're all partying on the submarine, and you see Girl Game on again. You see Chiaki, and she's like, You did good, kid. You did good. And then she fucking vanishes. She's gone.
gone forever. She's gone forever. Our favorite girl gamer is gone forever. Everyone is real sad over that. Oh, my poor Mary Let's Sue. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. And, uh, the Danny Rampa 3 Future Arts ends. Like, the final scene is Makoto right next to Kyoto. Did Kyoto survive? Did she survive from neural poison? How did she do that? And they made a, a new Hoax Peak Academy over a bunch of sunflowers, and it's the and happy endings for everybody, except for everyone who died. Uh, <laughs> well, let's all give a, a round of applause, you except know. Except for the gay guy. And no Junko. No Junko. No Junko. Just a bunch of crazy anime fights. But where's Junko? And this is where the canonical story of Danganronpa ends. We're done with one, two, it's time for three. And three starts with B3. This is where the, the, the lore and the, the, the realness of Danganronpa's universe fucking ends. Right? V3 is its own thing, and you'll find out why. But yeah, that's the end of the canonical Danganronpa universe. It ends with Kyoko and Makoto making a new Hoax Peak Academy and Class 77 becoming ultimate outcast for taking the fall for the Future Foundation, a.k.a. the government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Which is kind of a cool ending, if I would say so myself. There's problems with it, but it's still pretty cool and satisfying to watch. Especially Future, future Art. I highly recommend watching. Despair, the spare arc, you can just get that one. Now we're talking about the V3. We're talking about V3. And... Should I go? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should you go. I won't spoil anything. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will spoil the ending, you know, because the ending's important to talk about uh, Agenda 3. You know, like, that's a TS about traditional writing. And we can end the story about... Uh, Kotaka? Kotaka? That's his name, yeah. Kotaka. And his, like, constant battle with his audience. So Kotaka gets a bunch of positive reception. Everyone fucking loves Danganronpa. We got prequels. We got sequels. We got animes. Everyone fucking loves it. But inside, he's he's not really enjoying it. Yes, Mr. Can you translate in Chinese, please? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's more like we want more Danganronpa. And he simply just can't provide that. Yeah. If you know what I mean. He made something new and cool, Ultra Despair Girls. Everyone shitted on that game. Every Danganronpa fan shitted on that game. Right? And he constantly mentions it in other games. It's just like, oh, remember that failed prequel game? Like... He met, like he was actually kind of hurt by it, right? And this pressure to make more Danganronpa, better Danganronpa, just make this art that he physically can't do, is like shown perfectly in good old V three. And V three starts. You're you're this you're, you're you know the protagonist. You're you're the great protagonist. Lots of hope, lots of joy. You're kind of Chad, right? Kind of Chad. And then uh, the first case happens, right? And it's basically the same scenario of the first game. You're, you're stuck in the school, you can't escape, same killing game, same rules, right? But things are getting weirder and weirder. And again, I would say what makes V3 really special for me is it easily has the best cast of all the Danganronpa games. It has a solidly well-rounded cast. There's not one character in the cast of V3, I wanted to die, you know? And that's really hard, you know? Making 15 characters that are likable enough, you just don't want them to be killed off. Two had, like, a bunch of characters. Like, if they died, I wouldn't care. The chef guy? Who gave a fuck about the chef guy? One, the nerd dude? Who cared about the nerd dude? Celeste? I sleep. Like, you have a bunch of unlikable characters in the first two games. But in three, all of them were so solid. Right? And case one through five are some of the most well-rounded cases. You know, they don't reach like peak poggers. Like the first case in Danganronpa V3 is the best, one of the best cases. Almost as good or as good as Nagito's last case in uh, Danganronpa 2. 
But yeah, there's a big twist there, a big spoiler. I don't want to spoil it for you, but a big twist happens and you have to switch protagonists. So you play as this dude. He, you play as the ultimate detective in this one. They reuse some of the other concepts and you play as the ultimate detective. And you know, there's some weird shit. After every, every time you clear a case, you get this fucking flashback. You know, of the whole class dying, right? Everyone in the game dying. And it's just like, man, what happened to those kids, you know? It must have been the Great Hunt. And you're like, what's the Great Hunt? That's so weird. There's a mystery here. And everyone gets more memories by flashing the memory box, this thing called like a memory flashlight, or a memory flash. You flash it and you gain more memories. Right? And those are scattered throughout every case. So you get more and more and more. But, uh, you know, people are starting to fucking get crazy. You know, things are starting to be unraveled. And it's revealed at the fifth case that there's some weird shit. Like, one of the students, he, he's called the ultimate question mark, question mark, question mark, which is a, a common trope in Dinaropa. Like, someone who doesn't want to feel their ultimates was actually the ultimate survivor. And he's from the last killing game, right? And he was giving special advantages to get over that. So it's like, what's going on? There's another killing game? What's going on? And after doing a bunch of like investigating and a bunch of research, it's revealed that the first case was a sham. They framed the wrong person for murder. The mastermind rigged the case from the start. Right? So that's like not fair. That's like not cool, dog. You know? So they confront, you know, Monokuma about it, and it's revealed to be one of the playable <coughs> characters, the ultimate cosplayer, right? And this is when shit flips on his head. Not only is this being live streamed, there's a bunch of little cameras everywhere, but not only is this being live streamed. Okay, you have a, a character named uh, Kibo, and Kibo's a really cool dude, simple guy, he's a robot, he's the ultimate robot, which is really wacky, and Goofy, guess what? He's a fucking camera. He's a camera for the... Uh, he's the Twitch chat. <laughs> he's literally the Twitch chat. Right? And it's revealed that everyone in the game... Yeah? It's like one of those uh, Pokemon uh, Twitch chat runs where they're like... Everyone yeah, yeah, it's it's Twitch Twitch plays, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's Twitch <laughs> plays... Yeah, it's Twitch plays... Danganronpa, bro. You know, go right. Left. Bro, don't, don't hit down. down. Don't hit down. Who hit down, bro? <laughs> don't who did that. But, do it. And it's revealed that everyone's backstories, everyone's emotions and feelings are fake. They were all just real people who got their memories erased to play this fucking TV show. Right? Like, everyone's like, oh, my Nana had cancer? Fake. The, all the emotions in the first case? Fake. Danganronpa V3? You know what that means? Oh. This is the 53rd Danganronpa season. V stands for five. Roman numerals. Roman numerals. So it's the 53rd game. So the whole time they've been in this never-ending game show of people just erasing their memories and making up fake backstories and having people watching it over the internet. Right? And everyone's like, yeah, overcome it. Hope, 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 hope. But that's just what they want you. They want you to be entertaining and they want you to be like a show, like in the first two games. Where there's hope, where there's fair wins. And the only way you can win the game at this point is if you do nothing. If you literally do nothing, like the game doesn't know how to handle it. You know, the game show host doesn't know what to do. Right? So, at the end, the Twitch chat takes over Kibo, and you hear real fan co like comments about the first two games. You hear people talking about, like, why is this so meta? What's this meta shit about? I don't care about this meta shit. I just want the character back. Dude, come on. Can we have Junko back as a villain? What's up with this, Mon uh, this Monica chick? You hear all these crazy comments that are probably real. Real comments people made about the creator and about Danganronpa, and you shoot it down like one of the enemies you do in the cases. And it's this really fucking cool moment when you make the audience decide, you know what? 
Danganronpa should end. They should end with this game. So then, Kibo fucking explodes, right? And just starts breaking the whole studio. Starts, starts fucking wrecking shit. Fucking kills the mastermind or the main creator. And leaving our three surviving main characters alive to do something else than just make Danganronpa for the rest of their lives. They all walk out, and the game ends. So it's like the Truman Show? Just ah! like the Truman Show. It's the Truman Show. It's literally the Truman Show. There's tons of memes about it. It's amazing. So it's a clear allegory. It's a clear message that Tanaka is feels immense pressure to make more and more sequels. Like, I, I can't do that case justice. Like, it's crazy. You see, like, Dana Roma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. <laughs> when it went to seven, it showed Final Fantasy seven logo, but with Dana Roma. Oh. Like, they made parodies <laughs> of, like, every other game that has a bunch of sequels. And it just shows, like, he just wants this shit to end, and he wants to make his own thing. Yes. Is there a Danganronpa forever? Yeah, there we go, bro. Danganronpa forever. So, that's where Danganronpa ends. You know, B3 is the final game. And they, there are no announcements for any new Danganronpa stuff ever. Uh, the creator decided to make his own studio. He left yeah. Spikesoft, made his own studio. It's, uh, it's like... Tokyo, it's like Tokyo, but there's two O's in it. Tokyo Studios, and he's making, I think, two, two new IPs that are coming up, coming up pretty soon. Yes, Mr. Smith. I think I, I heard something where he, he ran into a problem because, like, the first project he was working on, he got like the artist again for Danganronpa to work on it, right? <coughs> but the artist is currently working with some other studio and making like another game with them. Yeah. Wherever, I, I saw a trailer for it and I was like, oh, that's crazy. I wonder, like, some people were worried, like, how's that going to conflict with each other? Because he's doing this thing. They, he said uh, they're working on this road. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's moving forward. He's going to greener pastures. Yeah. Leaving Spike Soft was probably a big thing. And he said this statement that kind of stuck with me. You know, he's just like, you know, I don't have creative control over this. The studio does, the fans do, you know? And he wants to kind of make an independent, like, indie game kind of thing. Always. It's like he doesn't want to be popular anymore. He doesn't want fans to be a part of shit anymore. He just wants to make his own kind of art, you know, his own kind of IP when he can express these creative ideas without being forced to make a killing game about it, you know? Without, without adding Junko every second. You know? Because think about the first game. The first game was supposed to be just a visual novel with mystery elements. But editors and the higher-ups said, cut that shit, don't bring that shit, we don't want that shit. You know? And the only reason Danganronpa was even popular is because of his own creative, like, creativity. You know? Tanaka, like, saved this whole franchise. You know? He made it from the ground up. He's the head writer. So it's just like, it's, it's interesting seeing him just kind of voice his kind of criticisms of like sequel-itis and like pressures from fans and companies and just making your own kind of art. And it's shown in Danganronpa, you know? And there's this good sincerity behind it as well. A lot of it's meta, a lot of it's subversive, but at the heart of it is just a man's vision. It's just him just trying to write kind of tragic shit with a nice, positive twist to it. You know, it was like that in the first game, second game, even the anime. <laughs> that wasn't even completely his. But I, that's what makes Danganronpa so amazing, is this kind of creativity and kind of like speaking sincerity through this like tongue-in-cheek, campy atmosphere. That could honestly tear your heart in half as well. So I highly, again, recommend everyone at least play Danganronpa B3. You don't need to play the other previous games to enjoy it. Maybe like Danganronpa 1 and 2. You know, play the, the three games. Watch the anime if you're really fucking into the lore, like I was. 
But I, I think that's it. I think if you guys have any other remaining questions about like, you know, maybe the developer or about about any like loose ends I forgot to mention, you know. Yes, Mr. Smith. What about the uh what you call it? The extra stories at the end of the games. The extra stories. Honestly, those aren't really extra stories. They're kind of like uh, the game in visual novel form. I thought the second one was like a little... Wait, no. Wasn't the first one a little different? Well, like, yeah, it's different because they have to pace it different. But okay. all the same story beats happen. Okay. Uh, also, in every Dinger Rumpel game, there is a uh, ideal mode or free time mode when, like, everyone's happy. It's not a killing game. We're, we're just making art. Oh, this is actually a dating show. We gotta date our waifus. Like, there's one in every single Dang Rumpa. And it's pretty cool if you really want to get to know the characters, you know, do all their free time events. And uh, Chewie, like, oh, make that character analyst video you've been craving to make, you know. You know, you can actually, like, there's, like, paired endings, at least for V3, if you reach the final day of, like, the, the dating thing. You actually have a pair ending with one of the one of the participants in the V three, and a lot of them hella cute, bro. Kaede, bro. Kaede. That's the only way you can get Kaede's uh fifth flower, is by going into free time mode and getting all her events. And it's pretty cool. Yes. I wanted to know more about the developer. Uh, developer. Ah, uh, there's not that much. He didn't work on too much. He worked on the Nomori games. You know, it's basically a, a bunch of like uh, escape the room puzzles and it has, <laughs> it's really similar to Ding and Ropa with the whole like, I gotta leave this fucking place. This shit's crazy. And there's tons of twists and turns, but it's like Ding and Ropa, but way more serious. You know, way more like, it, they play it straight a lot. No right? jokes. No one knows each other. And... Yeah. No one knows each other. It's like actually like kind of weird shit. Like, I also recommend the Nomori games, because the Nomori games have some really fascinating things about them. They, they talk about shared consciousness, they talk about Egyptian curses, they talk about everything. You know, I, like, I highly recommend you, uh, you know, uh, play the Nomori games. Or at least watch the Let's Play. The very least the first one. Yeah, the first one's really, really good. And uh, you can tell. You can, play, you can tell that Tanaka made this shit. You know, it has the same kind of mystery, and also kind of the same kind of darkness in it. You know, that he's kind of well known for. I highly recommend it. It's just him working with a different tone and a different canvas. It's really nice. Uh, for his new projects, I don't think he announced them. He kind of just posted like an image, yeah. like this is this is what it's gonna look like, bro. It's fucking sick. Uh, I heard there were some conflicts between him and Spike Soft, or over some certain stuff. But uh, I, I need more research on that end. Uh, like, him announcing his own, like, uh, studio and shit, this was recent. This was, like, like, five days ago, six days ago. Like, pretty recent he made his own studio. So, break, breaking news. Breaking news for this lecture. Yeah. <laughs> also, the music of Danganronpa is really good. Like, everyone loves the music of Danganronpa. It's godly. No joke, the dude, the dude who made the music. Like, he did not know how his music was going to be used. So every time he encountered a track in the game, he's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It was very cool. And also, he was like, he was working on another game. He was working on another project. So he was like, oh, fuck, man. Uh, I'll just go into Fruity Loops. I'll make this, uh, I'll make the main theme. Like, 20 minutes. It, it took him 20 minutes to make the main theme. Like, he literally banged that out in, like, 20 to 30 minutes. And then he came back, like, oh, I guess I'll fix this shit up a bit. And, no, like, the reason you hear the bang on rompa, like, the robot voice when you boot up the game, is literally because he's like, no one would sound sick if he went bang on rompa. Sounds pretty <laughs> sick, bro. So he just added it in. Like, literally, the, the, the musician and the composer of the Danger Rumpa games, it's just such a casual dude who's like, oh, fuck, um, the deadline's tomorrow. I might as well bang this out in 30 minutes and makes, like, the best music. <laughs> like, the dude's, the dude's a lazy fuck, and I love him. I love him to death. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's Danganronpa. You know? That's the Sparrow Junko. Uh, Danganronpa Zero is, uh, uh, the prequel, 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 prequel. Uh, it's about Junko, her childhood, 
basically she was always crazy she was born crazy uh 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 Tanaka or Tanaka I forgot his name right <laughs> I'm fucking bad but basically he wanted to make a villain with no reason he feels like villains are too sympathetic right he doesn't like sympathetic villains so he just decided to make Junko out of pure frustration for people who like like characters with deep backstories he's like fuck it she's just evil she's just mean right and that's why Junko was made uh, how she has the ability to erase people's memories is uh, she erased her own memory somehow, and she dyed her hair. Her natural color is red. She has red hair, that's her real hair color. And she dated the ultimate neurologist, and that's how she was able to make the you know, fucking memory loss technology. Uh, killed him to feel like a, a despair orgasm, and then the, the events of Dingarumpa, one, two, three, all that shit happens. That's, that's basically zero. Uh, you can see why I, I didn't really talk about the Sparrow Girls. Because, again, it doesn't really affect the main plot. The only thing that affects the main plot is Monica and, like, Toko being a future Foundation member. I think that's, like, the bare, the bare limit. You see what happened to Nagito, but you already know they, they got caught by the future Foundation. Like, you already know that shit, yes? I have a question about the Sparrow Girls. Um, not the Sparrow Girls. I guess the Sparrow Girls and two... How did Junko get in? Junko get in? And I, and she was just in the system. People, I think it's right, something about Monica. Like, like Monica, like, put her the virus inside it. But again, it's just like, it's like the idea that she's she's always there, you know. She, there's always Junko behind people's backs. Just like despair is with the man. But that's how I kind of viewed it. I, I don't think they really explained it that hard. But, yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Alright, that's it. We did it, boys. We did it. That's the end of the Dangan Rumpa lecture. Uh, sorry this got delayed uh, a couple of times. You know, the, your, your little brother gets food poisoning and everything goes on fire. But there you go. That's Dangan Rumpa 101. Uh, the test 